I wanted to do a quick video and let you all know about a deal I found on Amazon. Uh, lots of folks have seen the video that Johnny's Reloading Bench did back in July on the Huawei? W-A-O-A-W. We'll call it Huawei. On the Huawei 50 gram digital scale. Uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description to this video. Uh, Johnny gave it high marks and it sells for only about $20. Um, great little scale. Several other people have picked it up since and everybody seems to be happy with it. Well, we in the reloading community are often uh, frugal, <coughs> cheap, um, and while I wanted one of these, I didn't have a pressing need for it, so I waited until it went on sale, uh, you know, because $20 is so much, right? Actually, I kind of wanted two of them. Um, so every once in a while, I go to the link that Johnny gave and check the price, and it's still $19.97, so I keep waiting. Uh, not a big issue. Um, but the other day I was looking again and I noticed that in the similar item feature that Amazon has a couple scales that look almost identical. Uh, and this is one of them. Um, I saw a scale that I believe is the same. It's called the Xilink. Uh, it's spelled Z-I-L-I-N-K. Um, and like the Huawei, it comes with the two double or two AAA batteries. Uh, it's currently listed for $17.40, so $2.57 cheaper than the Huawei. Um, then there was this one, which is from Homgeek, and they, they print it right on the scale there. I guess that's how you pronounce that. Sounds good to me. This one is selling for $15, and... Uh, 97 cents, so four dollars less than the Huawei. I've checked out the pictures on Amazon and looked at uh, Johnny's video and a couple other people's videos. Um, as far as I can tell, this TL series, I mean even the boxes are the same minus a little bit of printing, but as far as I can tell, the pan, which I don't believe I'll use, is a very slightly different design and it didn't come with the two AAA batteries. Uh, the decals on the scale in the box are a little different, and that's about it as far as differences. Thank you for speaking with us today. What should we call you? Mr. Bacon will be fine. Okay, Mr. Bacon. We understand that you have reason to believe that there is something sinister going on with Elvis Ammo and the folks at Earl. I do. For those that don't know, Earl is the Elvis Ammo Redneck Research Laboratory, and it's run by Mr. Elvis Ammo himself. At face value, Earl seems like a legit place. They've shown how to recycle scrap lead into new bullets. They've designed their own 223 bullet. They've demonstrated different methods to powder coat and how to make that process more efficient. They've even developed methods to cut the powder coat process time in half. They've done research into new low temp methods for maintaining bullet hardness when applying powder coat, and they've even devised methods to turn zinc into bullets. Zinc, a bullet caster's worst enemy, and they figured out how to use it. They've developed their own black powder, and then they figured out how to launch bullets with Cheerios of all things. They continually develop these things and then give them away freely. But don't be fooled, there's something funny going on. There's been rumors of Earl working with the North Koreans with their missile technology. Can you comment on that? Well, I'm not sure I believe that, but I do know they can't be trusted. What makes you say that? Do you have any evidence? I do, and it's on video. We recently sent several Baconators out. I'm sorry, Baconators? Yeah, it's a name some of the boys have started using. We're not a gang or anything, just a bunch of guys named Mr. Bacon. Anyway. We sent a few Mr. Bacons out to deliver some cast bullets for Christmas, and apparently Mr. Ellis Ammo took offense. I think he's still upset about the Silicon Wars of Spring 2017. Several months ago, there was a little public bickering, and Johnny, from Johnny's Reloading Bench, asked the question in public, what does Elvis Ammo have against the silicone industry? Johnny identified Elvis as a sinister agent of the hardware cloth overlords, and let everyone know that Elvis was rolling deep in big steel mesh money. And how did Elvis take that? We never saw any sort of public retaliation. But if you'll notice, right after Johnny publicly ID'd that, he did three videos with powder-coated bullets, and then a short while later he had some videos with PID controllers. 
He even sent a couple people these PID controllers to include Elvis. I think the key word there is control. I think Johnny saw the silicone and powder coat war going on and thought he could jump in control, but I think Elvis and the Steel Mesh Mafia guys got to him. If you'll notice, Johnny hasn't had a single video with casting or cast bullets since that time, and that's been several months now. And do you think Elvis is still upset at you? I do. You see, I made a vinyl, but I represent Bacon. When the Mr. Bacon showed up to deliver bullets to Elvis, he became outraged. The report we got back stated Elvis was livid that the bullets he had received stood on their bases while the powder coat was baked on, that they were baked on a silicone mat instead of in a steel mesh basket, and that the Mr. Bacon delivery man was made of silicone as well. Lots of people think we're made of rubber or silicone, but really we're vinyl. It's a common misconception. Anyway, Elvis got up in Mr. Bacon's face yelling something about being fake bacon and how he felt like he was being treated like a dog. And then he got this evil grin and said he was going to wipe that smirk right off his face. He said he had just the thing for him, something he called butterfly farts. He said it was fueled by Cheerios, which I think was intended to be an insult. People think that bacon is just a breakfast food, but it's not, and Elvis knows we're sensitive to that. He went as far as to rename this load with Cheerios the bacon load. Oh wow, he went that far? Oh, it got worse. Elvis used this 38 caliber serial killer load and shot Mr. Bacon right in the face, point blank, while the Earl Rooster just stood behind him laughing. Then, Elvis ate an effigy of him, wound and all, while grinning from ear to ear. It was a clear message to all. Elvis is king, baby. Oh, that's terrible. What happened after that? Well, Elvis reached out to the JCM45 channel, which I can only assume is the fake news outlet of the Steel Mesh Mafia, and had them run a story comparing us to zombies and warning of a bogus impending bacon apocalypse, trying to turn public opinion against us. But it won't work. People love bacon, and they always will. So if you're waiting with bated breath to receive a Huawei scale for Christmas and it didn't show up, uh, go check out the Hom Geek. Um, it's the same thing, but it's four dollars cheaper. I put some free Harbor Freight AAAs in here. It it only seemed right. Um, that's it for this video. I just wanted y'all to know that you could get a cheap scale for even cheaper. I hope y'all have a great, safe, and blessed New Year. Ha <laughs> ha